Okay, making a deep. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Vishal. And uh, as uh, introduced by Dr. Vishal, uh, my task is to discuss, and this is a direct continuation of the previous two lectures by uh, Dr. Kalyan and by Dr. Uh, Isna Ravind. And uh, this is a discussion on GLP-1. And this is going to be a discussion on a pill, a new medicine. And this medicine is going to be available in India in the beginning of next year. And this is already available in many other parts of the world. So the first question, I, I can imagine that there will be a question from many of those doctors listening to us. Why should we require another medicine for diabetes? Already we are flooded with medication. So why do we require one more medication for the treatment of diabetes? So we have been listening to the benefits of GLP-1. We have been listening to the pleiotrophic benefits of GLP-1. So we are actually searching. So this quest is continuing. We are searching for a medication which will reduce the glucose, which will improve or rather it will have a benefit on the cardio renal systems. And it will also simultaneously will not produce any weight gain or can result in weight loss. But the most important factor apart from all these factors, I would say, the doctors are looking for a much more efficient solution in reducing the hemoglobin A1C. If you uh, go into the details of all these newer oral medications for the treatment of diabetes, they can hardly reduce the hemoglobin A1C by 0 0.6, 0 0.5, or 0.7 percentage. So we are searching for a drug which can reduce the hemoglobin A1C by more than 1 or 1.5 or even more than 2 percentage. And even after reducing the hemoglobin A1C by this much, more than 1.6 percentage, no hypoglycemia, no fear, no phobia of hypoglycemia. So this is the dream. And uh, in the last more than a year, we have been debating and we have been discussing, lecturing on ACE2 receptors. Uh, and this is with respect to COVID-19. No, similarly, there are GLP-1 receptors. And the GLP-1 receptors are there in every tissue in the body, in every vital organ in the body, there are GLP-1 receptors. And this results in favorable outcomes when you are administering GLP-1 receptor agonists such as liraglutide or semaglutide. For example, it can slow the gastric empty. It can modulate the action of both the insulin and the glucagon in the pancreas. And in the heart, it can result in vascular protection. And it acts on the palm-steak nucleus in the arcuate, in the hypothalamus. And this can increase the satiety, it can reduce the body weight. So there are a multitude of functions possible with the GLPN receptor agonist. And this is in contrast to insulin, because insulin, we are aiming at insulin to reduce, primarily to reduce the glucose. But here, apart from reducing the glucose, there are multiple pleiotrophic benefits, which is far, far superior to any other agent, any other agent in any other family in diabetes currently. So before I discuss, let us have an overview of the real world evidence. So what happens when a patient is failing on two oral agents? Either you can add one more oral agent, or you can add insulin, or you can add GLP-1. See what happens when you're acting on a GLP-1 when you are uh, having uh, a failure and the patient is uh, convinced on the use of a GLP-1 and you are adding a GLP-1 onto the existing therapy of, and that is a failed therapy with the two oral agents. There is a significantly more number of patients reaching the target hemoglobin A1C, reaching the weight target, more patients able to discontinue. So this is also important. Uh, they can discontinue one or more of those oral agents. And uh, if you look at the composite targets of hemoglobin A1C reduction, weight reduction, it is far more in the GLP-1 group when compared to the other groups. And I would say that discontinuation of oral therapies, discontinuation of other medications, so bringing down the dose of insulin. So these are all also resulting in the overall reduction pill burden. So that is also a headache for the patients the number of pills can also be reduced along with the composite of another, uh, another real world evidence. And this is from our center published a couple of years ago on the use of liraglutide. And this is in a total of 195 patients. 
and uh, i would with all humility i would say that this is a robust data and uh, this is the systolic blood pressure this is diastolic blood pressure and then the duration of diabetes of around 7 years and age of around 45 plus or minus 10 years and look at the subset of patients that th these are patients who are already on insulin or on other oral agents and when you are adding on to so this is intensification with the help of glp1 receptor agonist daily injections of liraglutide which has improved in the hemoglobin a1c so you can see the hemoglobin a1c reduction from 8 to 6.96 so this is a, a patient which is on the, and these are sub subjects on various therapies on various therapies various yeah, injections and on various oral therapies and this is the weight reduction which is substantial and this study has also highlighted the extra glycemic benefits of liraglutide along with significant body weight reduction of up to 4 kilograms and this is what we were expecting and this is exactly what we were actually searching for for many many years and glp1 receptor agonists are with us for more than a decade now but despite all these benefits despite all these evidences which has been already discussed by dr sr rajinji and by dr kalyan despite all these benefits the major barrier when we are discussing with the patients it is again the fear of infection because if you are given a choice when our patients are given a choice between the two modalities whatever be the newer injection or the delivery device has been available so there are a lot of new devices which are comfortable in fact but given a choice they always will opt for oral medications especially when the patients are not previously exposed to injections and even for a majority of those patients already on injections if there is a choice if a, a oral alternative is available for the same medication which is available as an injection very same medicine and this is probably the first time in the 100 years of history of insulin and for diabetes it is for the first time a medicine which is already available as an injection for the first time it is going to be available in the form of an oral pill and that is pioneering the new era and that is a new era where science and research has been very successful the scientists the engineers at nova nordis they have been extremely successful in actually bringing the first ever oral medication as a glp1 receptor agonist in diabetes and this is the unmet need the unmet needs for a non invasive therapy for a convenient and a highly comfortable and acceptable where the patients once you are discussing with them and once you are able to convince the necessity and the benefits there are more chances of 100% adoption of a therapy and this is exactly where an unmet need was currently existing so uh, dr kalyan was uh, a while ago discussing about the major barrier and uh, dr vishal also said in the beginning when you are uh, providing a peptide what happens if i am bringing one vial of insulin what happens it will be digested the protein will be digested and that is expected from any protein which is orally ingested so when you are orally ingesting a peptide you know uh, the predominant enzyme in the digestive juice in the stomach which is pepsin so pepsin will digest will degrade the peptide so you need to overcome the proteolytic digestion and you need to overcome the low ph in the stomach and also need to overcome another third barrier and that is a very very low bioavailability so bioavailability of an orally administered glp1 it is as less as less than 0.01 percentage so it is very 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 low so these are the major three barriers and this is exactly why we couldn't actually develop an oral alternative for insulin though science has been trying for the last 100 years and this has been actually made possible with this molecule and that is semaglutide i will spend a minute describing the structure of semaglutide because that is going to be important especially for those medical students for researchers and for the scientists and those doctors who will be discussing with their colleagues why is it important why is it different and look at the amino acid substitution substitution so there are three positions 
8, 26, and 34. So what do you see over the screen? It is the human GLP-1 molecule where there are three changes. At position 8, the amino acid, that is alanine, is substituted by alpha amino isobutyric acid. Why this replacement? This substitution is meant for protecting against dipeptidyl peptidase for degradation. So you know that GLP-1 is destroyed by DPP-4. And this is the DPP for inhibitor in semaglutide at position 8. And then position 26, very exciting. Lysine remains as is there, but lysine is connected by a spacer to a C18 fatty diacid chain. And this provides a strong binding to the albumin for the longer acting property. So this provides the long, uh, that is protractive mechanism of action of semaglutide. And there is a third very interesting replacement. This is quite interesting because there is a lysine uh, similar to position 26. There is another lysine at position 34. And there can be a wrong binding with the fatty acid in this position. That should not happen. So hence, position 34, the lysine is substituted, replaced by arginine. So semaglutide discovery. And this has led to path-breaking innovation. And uh, this is the pill currently available, which is already existing as a once weekly injection. And this has been made possible. This dream has become a reality where it is currently available as a rival cis 3, 7, and 14 milligrams. And uh, this is by co formulating this with SNAC. And SNAC stands for sodium amino capillate. So, sodium. N amino capillate. So, what is SNAC? So, we have been listening to a co formulations in diabetes. We know the co formulation with the insulins along with the GLP 1, that is, IDEC Lira is available. And then the popular co formulation, the Rhizodac, which is available in combination with the long acting along with the rapid acting uh, aspart. So, similarly, this is going to be an oral formulation, and the SNAC is meant for enhancing the absorption. So it is an absorption cancer. And it also has got multiple functions. So I will describe those functions over here. So this is how it looks like when you're ingesting the tablet. So this is the micro environment over there. So it actually sits on a particular position in the stomach. And locally, when the uh, tablet bursts, both semaglutide and the snack will start coming out. And uh, there is a local erosion which happens and it locally increases the pH. So when the pH increases, what happens? It will overcome the proteolytic digestion. So the, uh, normally the pH of the acidic juice is between 2 and 4 and it increases to around 7. And uh, number 2, it transiently increases the local permeability. So apart from increasing the permeability, permeability can be increased not only by snack but also by EDTA. But what happens with snack? Apart from increasing the permeability, it actually results in absorption, uptake of snack as well as oral semaglutide across the epithelium, across the epithelium into the circulation, into the capillaries. And this effect is time dependent and this is primarily via a transcellular route. So this is very, very specific and unique and this doesn't affect the tight junctions in the stomach. So when we are discussing about this molecule, the number and question by our doctor colleagues or by the educated patients will be, uh, so because we'll be, we'll be prescribing this drug in the beginning, maybe from January, February onwards. So whenever a new drug is prescribed, the patients keep on asking, doctor, are you going to experiment with me? Am I going to be a guinea pig? Absolutely not. Because all the experiments are already over. Thousands and thousands of patients are being studied already. And it has gone to exhaustive clinical trials. And this is the 3A program. And compared against possible, it has been compared in Pioneer 2 against Empaglifosin, in Pioneer 3 against Citagliptin. And this has been compared against all the contemporary popular therapies, all the contemporary popular therapies. So this is a molecule which has been extensively studied, including in real environment. 
in those with cardiovascular disease, in those already on insulin. So let me very briefly go through some of these benefits because we are quite interested in looking at the data on hemoglobin A1C because the A1C reduction across the Pioneer program, it has been around 1.5%. So this is against a placebo monotherapy. And uh, this is across global Pioneer trials with oral semaglobin. So when I'm showing the slides, please remember there are three strengths represented by three colors over there. 3 milligram, 7 milligram in light blue, and then dark blue bars are representing 14 milligrams of ribosomes. So these are the three strengths of semaglutide. And we are supposed to uh, every month escalate the dose and you can stop when you reach 14 milligrams. And what about the percentage of those patients reaching a hemoglobin A1C of less than 7%? 7 out of 8, 7 out of 10 patients have achieved a hemoglobin A1C reduction of less than 7% with oral semaglutide. So these are the percentages being represented over there. Why significant when compared to the popular therapies, both oral and injectables. But this is again quite interesting and probably clinically significant when we start prescribing this drug. So this is the A1C reduction with oral semaglutide 40 milligrams this is a post hoc analysis. To those subjects with a baseline hemoglobin A1C of more than 9%, oral SEMA has resulted in an A1C reduction up to 2.6%. Tell me the name of one oral therapy in the entire armamentarium for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, which can reduce hemoglobin A1C up to 2.6%. So this is going to be the only oral therapy, only oral therapy, which can even bring down the hemoglobin A1C up to 2.6%. And they have also compared in Pioneer 2 between SEMA and epaglucosin on the time spent in glucose control. 40% greater time is spent in control of glucose with oral SEMA against epaglucosin. And a change in body weight significantly higher with oral SEMA compared to uh, both placebo, yempa, sitcha, and even liraglutide, it is far higher. And the average is 5 kilograms. And in some of the clinical trials, it is much higher than 5 kilograms. And this is a post hoc analysis, significantly more number of patients achieving a weight loss of more than or equal to 5% with 14 milligrams. And this is a composite of both a hemoglobin A1C reduction of more than or equal to 1%. And a body weight loss of more than or equal to 5%, which is also significantly higher with the semaglutide compared to all those comparators in the uh, pioneer clinical development. So we do have the cardiovascular outcome trials. The initial one was only for a regulatory approval. Uh, but again, if you look at the data, 99.7% retention in pioneer 6. That means there is a very high level of adherence with a 21% reduction in the major adverse cardiovascular events. And even for a CBOT, which is not expected usually in similar trials, there is a significant reduction in both hemoglobin A1C and also the body weight. So what about using this drug in management, in clinical practice? So when it is going to, it's already available. It is already approved by the DCGA, already available in the United States. It will be very soon available in India by the beginning of uh, 2021. So what are the instructions to be given? The patients need to consume this medicine early in the morning, preferably with 120 ml of water. And then they should be fasting for another 30 minutes. So somewhat similar to uh, the th thyroxine medications, thyroid medications, so waiting for at least half an hour after ingestion of the medicine before eating, drinking, or taking any other medicine. And uh, this is how you escalate and uh, which are all those patients who are ideal for semaglutide? Though in those patients whom you are expecting a weight loss where hyperglycemia is a concern or when you are finding it difficult, uh, even with injectable, uh, for example, with other agents, uh, with injectable GLP-1 where the patients are having a high CV risk or even in the presence of renal or hepatic damage, you doesn't need to change the dosages of medications. It is well proven uh, for safety and efficacy even in older patients where injections can be a challenge. So oral semaglutide is undoubtedly a scientific breakthrough. 
and this is found to reduce the hemoglobin A1C much more than the glycans and glycans. And the hemoglobin A1C reduction is much more, it is far better than any other oral therapy. And in those patients with a hemoglobin A1C more than 9%, it has resulted in an A1C reduction of up to 2.6%. So I would say that uh, this is an innovation which I would like to compare with the Inspiration4 mission. And this is a SpaceX mission. So some of you probably will recollect this picture. And this is from uh, last week when those four civilian astronauts, they have landed back to Earth after three days of going around the orbit. And this is the crew dragon splashing off the coast of Florida. And thank you. Thank you very much for your patient hearing and for the opportunity.